a couple of minutes that I thought I would sit down and knit. So then I figured why not pull out the camera so that we can sit down and knit together. I have some time, you have some time. So let's knit and chat together. I have a new project, something that I've, I haven't shown you at all. So of course I cast on something new that's unrelated to anything that I've talked about lately. And then I also have some questions. So we're gonna do a knit and chat. I'm just gonna talk, I'm gonna tell you what's up. I will tell you a little bit first about what I'm wearing. I'm actually having a little bit of trouble with it. <laughs> I don't know, it's just very, hmm. hmm. It's the Cumulus blouse, or I wanna call it the Cumulus tee, but I think the Cumulus tee is a tank top. Uh, this, yeah, this is just that Cumulus blouse, but I made it into a t-shirt. I like it. It's made with Pearl Soho cattail silk. I made it a couple of years ago and it took me an entire year to finish <laughs> because it's knit on very, very tiny needles. Uh, but I really loved the uh, yarn because it had little colorful nips in it. Uh, the fabric, I'm not too crazy about. It kind of just feels, it feels rough to the touch. Uh, and I don't know, I guess it, it flows really nice. It has a nice drape to it. Um, I kind of wish that I would have knit it in a different color. Um, I don't know, a black t-shirt is good. It goes with everything. That's kind of what I was thinking, but I'm looking at myself right now and I'm like, you know what? I could have benefited from some color today, but I wanted to wear something a little bit different. It is getting a lot warmer outside now. We're finally getting some sunshine here in Brussels, which is really great. So slowly but surely, I think I'm gonna have to be packing away some of those heavier knits Still have some in rotation, of course, because the weather is not perfect here <laughs> until um, end of May, June. And when I say perfect, it's it's like a really nice, breezy, warm weather. I love it. I love summertime. I love spring, especially here, uh, because you can still benefit from some of the knits that you have, as long as they're not too heavy. But some of the woolly wool sweaters that I've been bundling up in during winter will have to go away, so that's too bad. Like my Wednesday sweater, I don't know, that neckline, I don't think I can really wear it anytime soon or for much longer. And uh, my North sweater, that sort of thing. <sighs> so this is probably the only springy knit that I have. <laughs> I still count cardigans as spring knits because you can, la they're layering pieces, um, but, yeah, as far as t-shirts and tops go, I don't really have much. A lot of the things that I've made have either, well, they've been worn out. That's really what it is. I need to knit more things, um, but who has the time? Because I've got another project on the needles that needs my undivided attention. And let me tell you a little bit about it. It is something new that I've never shown you and never even talked about wanting to cast it on. So of course I did. It's the Melange sweater by Petite Knit, the baby version. Of course, I would not fit into this sweater. I really love this color combination that I'm going for. It's like a little gardener green and the cream. This is actually some of the white that I'm using in my, um, oh my gosh. <laughs> Farnham sweater by the Knit Pearl Girl. I have the cone right here because I wound some cakes um, for that sweater. And yeah, I'm just working off the cone and I'm holding it together with another woolly knit fiber. It's uh, another Merino. I don't know the color name. This is obviously not the cone. And if I remember, I will put it somewhere on the screen. This has been working up really fast. I cast it on last week on a whim, mainly because I wanted something a little bit different. I was kind of getting bored with black and white stripes. Uh, I really love how the Farnham sweater is coming along. Uh, I'm on some sleeves. I haven't finished the body, but I decided to take a break and then work on the sleeves. And then halfway through the sleeve, I was like, you know what, I'm kind of done working on stripes. So I just need a little bit of a break. I need break a break from black and white. I need some color. And I really wanted to knit up something for Arthur because it's been a while. And really, this has just reminded me how fast baby knits really work up. I mean, I haven't even had time to document the process of this, really. I think I've only shared two pictures of it on Instagram uh, in my stories. So, I mean, 
it's grown so, so much in such a short period of time. I'm on the body and I'm actually doing the ribbing. I'm just now starting the ribbing of the body. So I think in a couple of days time, we will have a brand new sweater for Arthur. And it's very much needed because <laughs> I am becoming very much aware that I don't have any hand knits for him anymore. And I need them for him. I mean, it's not necessary. Of course, we're going into warmer months and he's not really gonna get a lot of use out of knitwear, but I've kind of started a little tradition. I don't know what else you would call it. For myself, uh, each month, I take those milestone pictures, you know, like a first time mom would. Uh, every month of his life, I have those little month milestone cards. My mom got them for me and I've been taking a picture of him and every single picture so far is of him um, in knitwear. So all the things that I made last year, so far every single one has been featured. Well, not every single one, cause I think I knit, I wanna say nine pieces. I haven't really, I haven't counted. I forgot. And the majority have already become too small, <laughs> which is just so sad. Uh, I have, I have some more pieces. It's okay. We still have the Selma sleep suit jacket modification that he hasn't yet worn. Uh, and he hasn't worn the Ingrid, Ingrid sweater baby yet. So those two are potential outfits for his milestone photos, but Everything else I think he's been in. He's been really getting a lot of use out of his Carl's cardigan this month. Uh, I'm actually starting to use it just as outerwear, which is really nice that now um, it's starting to get a little bit warmer so he can use, he can just wear a wool cardigan out instead of like an entire like snowsuit almost. Uh, so that's been really nice. And that also, you know, will be good for this because this could kind of act as outerwear. I'm knitting the 12 to 18 month size. Arthur is a big boy. He is six months old and he fits in nine month clothing. I think that is just insane. Um, I don't know how my mother heart can take it, <laughs> but I'm coping with it. It's just, it's crazy. So yeah, I, I've been, thinking, hey, we really need to get a head start on some of um, more sweaters for him. Considering I've got a lot more pictures to take and he's running uh, out of things to be put in. And you know, I try not to double up each month. I have, the Friday sweater has been a big hit in his wardrobe, so he did wear that one twice, but so far he has, you know, it's one knit per month, so. I need to kind of keep up with that tradition. So I need to knit some more things. This will definitely be way too big. Um, so maybe it will be for a couple of pictures down the line, but I still envision now after, you know, blocking and after it all being ready, I can kind of envision it as an outerwear piece for him in springtime. Uh, it's gonna be 100% wool. So it is gonna be very warm. Uh, so depending on, you know, the weather, maybe it won't be ideal, but, it would be a nice option to have instead of, you know, a store-bought jacket. Uh. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's what I'm working on. It's a good pattern. I think it's it would actually have a lot of re-knit ability, kind of depending on what the shape looks like on him. It seems like it could be a really nice basic pullover sweater. Uh, and I'm here for that. I could use a nice basic sweater to continue to knit him up uh, for all of the months of his life. I think I'm kind of reaching the end of that one though. I probably should have bought the child's pattern <laughs> if I wanted the, you know, anything past 18 months, but oh well. Anything else to say about that? I don't think so. <laughs> I'm just gonna be knitting away on the ribbing and then I'm going to take a look at some of the questions that you guys sent me a while ago. Um, but they're evergreen, so I figured I would dive into those today um, because I'm tired. <laughs> I My brain is working at half capacity. Um, you know, 
If you just needed an idea of where my head's at right now, I'll, send, I'll show you this text that I sent to Roz earlier this morning. Uh, and that will kind of sum up how things are going. <laughs> Everything is good. Uh, it's just typical baby things. And we are in survival mode sometimes, and that's totally okay. So the questions that you guys sent in, very helpful. And I'm excited to go into some of them because there, there's some interesting questions. Um, it, good topics to cover. And I think it would also be interesting to hear what you guys think about all of these questions in the comments. I would really love to have a little bit of a discussion. You know, you guys know, I always like going through the comments and having a read to see what you guys think. So uh, definitely share your opinion if, if you want to. Okay, so first off, uh, do you have any dream slash goal knitting projects? This it's a topic I was actually thinking about recently because of Inga from Knitting Traditions. She's hosting a Dream Knits Cow for the entire year. So I was already kind of thinking through what would my dream knit be? Um, you know, I, I don't know. I just think right now it's not any project really in mind. It's just I want to knit a colorwork sweater. I told you guys this, um, that for spring, I would really love to cast on a colorwork sweater if I can work work in it in to my projects. Um, I don't think that I would finish it necessarily, but I would just really love to have that sort of accomplishment. You know what, let me bring you guys down a little bit so you can see what I'm knitting on. <laughs> There we go, that's better. This was a really long time ago when I first started knitting. Uh, I still had that kind of like 70s influence style that I really loved. And she has this wrap cardigan that's just all over color work in the most beautiful colors. And that I think would be a dream knit in a way. I don't know if it would really fit into my style now um, because I feel like I'm more laid back. Isn't it like norm core? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what my style is, but uh, yeah, t-shirts, jeans, sweatshirts, sweater, oversized sweaters. That's kind of like my style with some like tennis shoes or, you know, um, Blundstone work boots. That's kind of my daily uniform. Uh, so I don't know if it would really fit into what I tend to grab for every day, uh, but just completing that, would be really fulfilling, I think, and would be a dream. Uh, so anything kind of like that. I, I am also really attracted to um, yeah, traditional um, Norwegian koftas, I think is what it's called. Uh, again, inspired by Inga from Knitting Traditions. Those kind of like very classic projects. I. I would really love a sweater like that. I, again, don't know if it really fits into my personal style, but I'll make it fit. <laughs> I mean, there's no rules with style, right? So it's whatever you want it to be. So I think something like that, a dream project would definitely be a color work one. Um, oh yeah, that would be really nice. Just any, right now I would just wanna dive into any color work project. Um, I think I'll start small. And then also I really need a cable sweater in my life too. I've always wanted to knit the one by my, my favorite things knitwear. Again, I can't remember what number it is. She has so many. You can't name your sweaters with numbers. It's so confusing. I love every sweater design almost that she puts out. Um, I just can't, with the numbers, it gets mixed up in my head. So I'll put that on the screen as well. Uh, it's the one that, you know, so many people have knit. That would be also a dream knit for me. I keep it simple, you know, it's not uh, too outlandish. Um, and those are like dream knits in the sense that I think I could really accomplish them. Uh, so that's really what's coming to mind. Nothing too, too crazy. What are some things that you've knit but never wear and why? I have to say that when I make something, I wear it. I do, um, and that's like, I do that because throughout the making process, I'm constantly judging, will this be something that I want to wear or not? Um, now, 
my style, like I said, has changed quite a bit. And I think some things that I have, I wear, I don't wear anymore because it doesn't really fit my style or it's just not practical for me. And there are multiple reasons, but then there are also projects that I have just worn out, worn to death, um, have shrunk. It's very tragic. Actually, so I think I told you guys that we moved out all of the, um, all the stuff from our office is now Arthur's room. And now all of my yarn is here in our main living space. And I've downsized a lot. Uh, it's all in that one cabinet. You've probably seen it if you've been around for older videos. I had this big glass cabinet. I hate it <laughs> because I actually hate that it doesn't hide anything. Uh, it just shows you how messy I am <laughs> in terms of how disorganized I am with my uh, yarn collection. But I've been able to put everything in there, which has been really great. Uh, however, um, yeah, I just hate that. I can see it all. I really, at first I thought that that would be a good idea. Like, oh, I can see everything that I have. So then when I'm not even looking in the cabinet, I can see what kind of yarn I could potentially work with. And yeah, that's a good idea. But now that it's in like the main space, I just feel like it makes everything look messy. So that just don't buy the Ikea cabinet that's completely glass. Just don't do it. You're, you're gonna appreciate having solid doors and things so you can close it and forget about it. And then when you open it up, be like, wow, I'm really messy. <laughs> when I was going through that process of downsizing all of my yarn, I actually came across a box, an entire shoe box full of Wool in the Gang patterns. Um, so if you buy kits at Wool in the Gang, they give you the um, pattern printed. I don't think they give electronic versions. I never received one. I really wish that they would just do that. So then I could just have it all in my phone or on my computer, whatever. Um, that's kind of disappointing to me because I didn't want to hold on to these paper patterns. I just, I just didn't. I kept a couple, but I actually just threw them in the recycling, um, the paper recycling. And that I, I had a moment where I was like, should I hold on to these? Uh, I really loved these patterns and I knit the majority of them, which is just wild uh, because I don't have those uh, finished objects, not a lot of them anymore. And I'll tell you why. Uh, they range from skill level. <laughs> they range from quality of the finished piece. However, I will say when I was first knitting and even at my most beginner level, I was wearing the knits that I made. And I think I've been wanting to make a video of some of those that I still have and I want to compare them to what I produce now and really have a look at that because my style or my style, yes, but my skill level has increased drastically. And I feel like I kind of want to take a moment to appreciate that. But um, yeah, a lot of them though, I had to say goodbye to for multiple reasons. The fibers just, um, like the project unraveled and I couldn't save it. I tried to unravel and reuse the yarn for a project. That was a fail. I um, have worn a lot of pieces to their absolute limit in terms of how well the fiber has kept up over time with washing and wear. Uh, they just look a little ratty and not so cute. Like my Vivian cardigan, the it's a tan cardigan that's all garter stitch. And I loved that cardigan. I threw it on over everything. It had so many mistakes in the back. So if you saw me from behind, you'd be like, what the hell is she wearing? <laughs> but in the front, it was like, you know, it looks pretty good. <laughs> and I used to wear that all the time, but it is so worn out because it's cotton. And, you know, just over time after washing, it just, it just didn't hold up. And I shrunk a cardigan that I absolutely loved as well. I had a phase with Wall and the Gang. I really, I really knit a lot of their patterns. I really loved that brand. Um, they had this yarn called Billie Jean yarn and it's recycled denim. And I just love the fact that it was from recycled denim and it was a denim fiber. I thought that was really cool. I made a couple of things in that and I shrunk the cardigan that I had uh, and then again, similarly to cotton, because it is cotton, 
Um, it just really got worn out over time. It unraveled uh, or it, um, there were stitches that broke and I, could, I just couldn't save it. And I also didn't really feel like saving it because it shrunk and it didn't fit the way that it used to. So those are a multitude of reasons. Mainly it's that I got a lot of wear out of it when I first cast it on. That's a huge thing. <laughs> Whenever I make something, I don't know if maybe you're the same, I wear it constantly. Uh, it's my new favorite piece, you know, and I wear it all the time. It's almost like I'm a cartoon character wearing the same thing <laughs> every day. Uh, and then, you know, after the newness of it uh, kind of fades, then it's in my regular rotation and I'm kind of gotten over that. And it's something that I grab for, but not something that I'm wearing, wearing, wearing all the time. Uh, but yeah, so when I have that new object, it definitely gets a lot of love and then it just becomes a regular item. And I just, I just wear my pieces a lot. So it's natural that they will break down in some way. So over the years, yeah, a lot of the ones that I've made so many years ago, yeah, they've just, they've just gotten a lot of use. Uh, and that's the main reason why I don't wear them. Uh, so it's really just about the fiber and how it keeps. The, the ones that are still kind of in acceptable um, condition. I just don't grab for because they don't really fit uh, my my current lifestyle. Um, like my seamless mock neck sweater, uh, I would love to wear it. It's just a little too heavy for me. Um, I like a little bit lighter garments now, a little bit um, more of a smaller gauge. Uh, I think for beginners, those projects are really great. And as a beginner, I loved remaking all of those patterns over and over again, the cozy mock neck sweater, the classic VNF vest, the um, seamless mock neck sweater, those I really love to create. I just don't wear them as much anymore just because they are so much bulkier and I just don't feel like it fits my lifestyle. So some, some things that I have, uh, I just don't wear because, because of that reason. But I am definitely a knitter that knits for her wardrobe. I totally respect uh, knitters that want to just knit for the art of it and just have a collection of art, of uh, fiber art. I think that's great. Uh, it's just not me. You've seen that with my unfinished objects. I will stop working on a piece if I just know that it's just not something that I'm going to reach for. I just don't feel like I need to waste my energy uh, if I just know that I'm not going to wear it because that is just, that's why, that's why I knit. Okay, so what about favorite knitting gear? Do I have any? I love my Look and Needles, really love them. I'm using them right now. I actually invested in a pair of C-knits <laughs> because everyone's talking about C-knits and I wanted to give them a try. I'm not normally a bamboo fan. All of the bamboo needles that I've worked with in the past, okay, just making sure that we're still recording. All of the bamboo needles that I've worked with in the past, I haven't liked just because they're so slippery. And what I really love about the Luka needles is that there's a little bit of resistance. Wood needles in general, um, yeah, there's just a little bit more resistance and I feel like that helps me out with my tension. And if I knit with bamboo, for example, my tension is so much looser. Same with metal needles, just because the stitches slide a lot. Um, Yes, I guess you can knit a lot faster, but I'm more interested in maintaining the tension uh, at this point. I'm not really trying to be the fastest knitter out there, so that really doesn't um, matter to me as much. But I have tried the C-knits, and I do really like them. Um, they're, as far as bamboo needles go, pretty... Uh, they have good... they're pretty grippy. I actually like how the yarn glides on them. It's not too fast. It's not too slow kind of thing. So I, I like them. The only thing that I kind of regret, and this is a me problem, <laughs> is that I purchased the four inch tips instead of five. So these are five inch tips and I'm just so used to them. The way that I knit, I use that extra length of the needle to like kind of hold my work like this and I use it yeah, to just grip onto the the project. And it makes me knit a little faster. And so with the four inches, 
I bought them because I already had five inch tips. So I was just like, this would be really nice to have something a little bit different since they're technically, I don't technically need them. <laughs> it would uh, be nice to have something a little bit different, but, and yes, working in the round, I think might be a little bit faster, but even still, I'm just so used to how I grip this needle that it, it's been a learning curve working with them. So I kind of regret not getting the five inch um, because it's something that I actually like. I didn't know that though until I was working with four inch ones, but I really like them. Uh, I don't think that the, there's no needle to kind of tighten. Like with the look needles, you have this little hole that you use um, with a needle to tighten the, the tips onto the cord. And you don't have that with CNIT. So sometimes it's got, it's come undone. Uh, so I don't really think that the join is all that seamless. I think the cord's really nice, sure, but it's unscrewed a couple of times as I was working. So I'm not 100% happy with them. I think both of both Look and Needles and C Knits have uh, pros and cons. Uh, you know, I don't think any needle set is really gonna be perfect. I would be curious though to try out Chagu interchangeable needles because I really love the red lace needles that I have. Uh, but I don't need another set. I can tell you that after a year, I don't like the Luka copper needle set that I bought. I regret buying that because I kind of knew at the moment that it was an impulse purchase and I was buying it because it looked pretty. I should have known. Um, I liked them at first. I think everything is fine with them except for the weight. And I don't think that it would necessarily be an issue if I didn't struggle with wrist pain. Um, it's gotten so much better, uh, but that has been a huge thing for me is to kind of maintain my my wrists and make sure that I'm not uh, overexerting myself. So those just make it worse, any kind of project that I'm working with. I don't really want to use them because I'm just worried that if I'm working on the project for an extended period of time, my wrists are just going to break down. So and then I'll have to stop for a couple of days. Uh, so I'd rather not do that. So I just don't really grab for those copper needles. That's a shame. Um, so I might have to look into uh, donating them somewhere because I really don't see myself reaching for them often at all. Speaking of, uh, how do you keep your hands ready to knit? Well, uh, yeah, I so I was dealing with wrist pain a lot. 2021? Yeah, 2021. Uh, that was something that kind of slowed down my knitting. And then, yeah, it all, it all spiraled from there. <laughs> I don't really need to go back into it, but I have dealt with wrist pain in the past. It's gotten so much better now, but I do feel it from time to time, especially now uh, that Arthur is gaining a lot of weight as he's growing. Uh, I'm getting what they call mother's wrist. Not so much though, which is really great. And I think it's because I'm taking um, prenatal vitamins still because it's the same as the postnatal vitamins uh, for breastfeeding. So I'm taking those vitamins and I wanna say it's the folic acid. I'm also making sure that I'm taking vitamin D uh, because we're definitely deficient here in Belgium because the sun is, is away quite a bit. Uh, so those are two things that I've introduced into my daily routine that might have an impact. I don't know for sure though, but it is interesting that after I've been doing those, um, taking that regularly, that I haven't really dealt with it all that much. Um, but like I said, I am starting to get it because I'm, you know, cradling Arthur and holding him. And basically what I do is take vitamins. <laughs> I haven't really done much. I am not very good at stretching. I'll be honest with you. Uh, but I do take more breaks also than probably in the past because I just don't have as much knitting time as I used to. So that could also be it. Um, I would recommend starting there, maybe see if there's any kind of vitamins that you're deficient in. I took blood tests to figure that out and then I adjusted my diet accordingly. Um, but yeah, you could also look into stretches. I know that there's a lot of really nice videos of um, good hand stretches to do to make sure that you 
uh, have the proper wrist strength. Something to look into maybe. So what do you think of knitting machine drama and uh, handmade versus hand knit? Um, well, I didn't know that there was knitting machine drama. I did notice though that the Centro knitting machine has become very popular on Instagram. Uh, I think that's also from TikTok. TikTok and Instagram have made it something really big. I don't know if it's knitters that are doing it or uh, or it's crochet, um, people who normally crochet that want to have something that's knit. Um, it, I don't know. I don't really care. <laughs> I think maybe ask if you would have asked me a couple of years ago, maybe I would have had a different opinion, but I feel like I've kind of relaxed a little bit on my handmade, I don't know, opinions. I just think also this has to do with wrist pain too, because once I was unable to knit, that was really sad for me. I wanted to be able to knit. So I'm actually thinking that, yeah, okay, maybe it's people who don't know how to knit, who love to crochet, want to have something knit in their wardrobe. They wanna make a project like that. I think that's really cool. But then also think about maybe people who can't knit anymore due to arthritis or you know, whatever it might be. Um, the needles are too small for them. They just need something a little bit easier uh, and quick. A knitting machine would be really great, like those circular ones. I don't know how much I really love the fabric that's made from that, um, but I could definitely see maybe somebody who wants to keep knitting as a hobby, but just can't do it. That, that would be really nice. But then if you're thinking about like those really big knitting machines that people make garments with, I don't know, there's sewing machines. I guess that's, I don't hand sew. I would never want to sit down and hand sew. I would not even waste my time. I feel like that would take way too long, but I would love to sit down at my sewing machine and make a top in a couple of hours. That would be really great. So I feel like maybe there are some people that have that opinion as well. They look really complicated. They look really complicated though. So I don't think that there's any less skill involved. I feel like there's a whole other range of, there's a whole other skill set required to work a knitting machine. And I look at that and think, I don't have the time to figure that out. <laughs> so I know how to knit with two sticks and I will continue to do that. And I don't really think that it's a, it's a big deal. Um, just let people use the knitting machine. I will say with the Centro knitting machine though, I mean, you really can only do so much. Um, at least I look at that and I'm like, okay, you can make some panels, that's cool. Uh, you can make some hats in the round. Um, it's just a shame that the it's so stretched out. I, I just wish that maybe they would create some tighter gauged um, projects or machines. I just wish that they would create some tighter gauge machines so you can make I don't know, something else. Uh, so you could really have a wider range of what you can create. We're gonna end this on the most controversial question. Uh, Overconsumption of yarn, is it a thing? Well, I, yes and no. I think if you're gonna put your money somewhere, I would think buying the fiber to make something is, is good. If you know that you're gonna make something with it, I don't know, There's, this is a very difficult uh, answer. I personally, for me, don't like to have too much. I don't like to have a really large stash because I just know myself and I'm all about the new and the shiny, the thing that I just got, the thing that's on top of mind, I wanna work with that. I just know that's just how I create, that's just how I operate. Um, I personally just don't see myself going through, and I know this about myself, I don't go through my stash very often to dig up old gems. Uh, I like to have a small amount that I think is manageable that I could actually see myself knitting with in the next six months to a year. I don't think I'm there yet though. I still think that I have too much. Um, I have too much yarn but it doesn't overwhelm me like it did 
a couple of months ago. Like I, I had way more than this and it was just hiding and I have a small apartment, but it was somehow, there, were, there was yarn hiding in so many different corners of my apartment. So that's just, that was just an issue that I had to take care of and I did. I think I'm in a better place now. I think I could do even better just considering the amount of, the amount that I am able to knit. I just need to keep that in mind and have a stash accordingly. Um, but I'm not a perfect person and I will give in to temptation <laughs> and I have, you know, and I've welcomed yarn and projects into my life that maybe I could have gone without. And you know what? That's okay. We will get there sometime, you know? Uh, so as long as I'm continually looking at it and um, finding better homes for some of my yarn, I'm going to be content with that. Um, but that doesn't mean that this applies to everybody else. I just don't feel comfortable saying like, yes, overconsumption of yarn is a thing for everyone because there are some people who knit a lot faster than I do. And I have to remember that they're entitled to their stash as well, you know? Um, I just think it's a good practice to be mindful about what you're welcoming into your life. That's applied with everything. I mean, we can talk about fast fashion being anti-fast fashion uh, because we like to make our own clothes. I think that's really great, but just also remembering that, you know, there is uh, such a thing as buying in excess for anything. And, you know, just to be mindful of that, but that looks like, that looks very different for, from person to person. I feel like buying an access for me is anything that's more than this cabinet right here. If it can't fit in the cabinet, then it's too much. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that's my answer. I think it, it depends. It depends on the rate in, in which you knit. And it also depends on your personality. Do you think that, are you a, shiny and new type of person? Do you look at things and get really inspired by what you see in the moment, what you've got, you've acquired in the moment? If you're like me, yeah, maybe a large stash isn't for you. Uh, if you are somebody who likes to go through and really appreciates everything that you have purchased over the last couple of years, you know, um, and you see yourself grabbing those and you do grab for those and, you know, get them in and out of stash, if you know that you can, if you can rely on your uh, self that way, I think, you know, you can have way more yarn than I, than I can have. <laughs> uh, but no judgment here. I really, I couldn't care less, to be honest. I, I think I've relaxed a little bit. <laughs> All right, let's see. That is where I'm at. Got a couple of rows in, which is not too shabby. Uh, you know, baby nets just always fly off the needle. So I was expecting more progress than what my usual would be. Uh, but yeah, that's that's about it for me. I really appreciate you guys sitting down and chatting with me as always. You know, it's nice to get in a few rows on a project with, with someone, you know? Uh, let me know what you guys think of some of these questions. Uh, what would your answers be? I would be really curious to hear what your thoughts are on some of these topics that were a little controversial. <laughs> um, I don't think I said anything to uh, out there though. So I was pretty milk toast. Uh, yeah, so thank you guys for being here. I appreciate you guys uh, sticking around. If you liked this video, definitely give it a like. That would really help me out. And maybe subscribe if you haven't already to stick around. We would love to have you here. We do knitting and chatting videos. We do, I don't know, just any kind of knitting content, whatever comes to mind, to be honest. <laughs> So if that's your sort of thing, definitely stick around um, and click that subscribe button. Okay, I'm gonna go and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.